This is the Jack Wolf Knives Laid Back Jack version two. Uh, the second iteration, the second run of a very popular Jack Wolf Knives knife uh, in this classic swayback pattern. Uh, ben Belkin, the owner designer of um, Jack Wolf Knives, takes these classic designs and tweaks them. For instance, this swayback jack has a little bit less of a swayback, a uh, little less of a curve on that handle. And uh, he's gone through a whole uh, 13 pattern cycle uh, where he's taken classic patterns, updated them uh, in both build and design. Look at that sharpening choil. And uh, output them, uh, produced, had them produced by a company who we don't know. That's part of his deal with that company, I guess. And, uh, but whoever they are, man, these things are outstanding. There's something uh, very interesting about this new set of Jack Wolf knives. Um, this version two, well, let's say uh, they went, he went from uh, gun stock Jack all the way through uh, the 12 knife series, came back to the gun stock Jack with the bolster locking gunslinger Jack. And then he's on the second pattern again, the second iteration, he's done some changes. That's the long way of saying version two has some differences. Uh, there are five new versions of this version two. They are all uh, Barlow style bolsters. So big, long bolsters here, uh, triple fluted. It's a nice little luxury uh, touch there. That's what these knives are all about. The luxury touches that uh, slip joint people look for. Um, these Jack Wolf knives are replete with them. Uh, they are made for slip joint fanatics. Um, look, you can see how uh, flawlessly they uh, the blade and the spring mate up and the half stop, same thing. And then of course, when it's open, you can barely, you can't feel it. You can just barely see it. Uh, each side, one solid slab of titanium milled and contoured to shape, uh, including an area to fit the cover. Now these new five new versions of this version two Jack Wolf knives, uh, laid back Jack. This one to me is the most exceptional because, well, A, I find it extremely beautiful because of the wood, that beautiful rosewood next to that blasted titanium just looks so gorgeous with that hand rubbed S90V. Uh, but also, this is the first time um, Ben has uh, designed a knife and put natural materials on it. We talked about this in a couple of the interviews he did on the show, where I'd ask if he was going to use wood or bone, and he, he's, he said that having something manufactured overseas using those materials can be very iffy. Uh, because they can be in a different heat, different humidity, and then they, they go through all different sort of uh, uh, changes, temperature and barometric changes as they come over here and ship and store and all that, and are likely, or more likely, with natural materials to get warpage and misfit and all that. And so this is the first time he's used wood or any sort of natural material on a knife, and it it paid off. I can understand on the first version, not going for it, but he's got a brand now that people are uh, really, really digging. So time to take that kind of a chance. So I'm really happy he did. And I'm very grateful he sent me this knife. Thank you, Ben. This thing is absolutely beautiful. And to me with that wood and just the look of it with the wood, the blasted titanium and the hand rub satin, this is truly a gentleman's, uh, gentleman's folder. And I know these, you could call all of these that, but to me, that that material is so nice. Uh, Jack Wolf now, okay, so the other materials, there's that beautiful purple curanite uh, with the black anodized titanium and the black uh, coated blade, which is crazy. You know, you don't see that often. Maybe every once in a while, Rough Rider did something like that, but it looks stunning with that purple curanite. It's all swirly and beautiful and shiny and then it's right next to that black and black it looks awesome and then there are two really uh sumptuous um fat carbons or one of them i think is a camo carbon uh beautiful as usual carbon fibers and then two titanium versions uh one uh with a uh contoured blasted titanium handle you still get the 
um, demarcation of the bolster, but it's all one solid piece. And then there's a version like that, except with some, uh, with some um, uh, jigging in there. So all really handsome, all different, and touching on some different classic aspects of uh, slip joint knives. Incredible walk and talk on this as expected. And let's see, I, I never do this, but hang on a sec. All right, let's just see how sharp this is. We are dealing with levels of sharpness beyond comprehension. Of course, I'm joking, but this is wickedly sharp. This thing is very sharp. Each new Jack Wolf knife, I feel uh, they get thinner behind the edge. And uh, you can you can tell there's a difference in the surface. Let me clean all this crap up. There's a difference in the surface, the cutting surface, uh, with this one because of that hand rubbed finish. Uh, whereas with uh, most of the Jack Wolves here, this is the first version, a very well used and loved um, laid back jack version one slightly just uh in feeling it slightly less tension on the spring here on on the first version um but you see these oh man that's nice and thin too though you see these uh grind lines you can feel them when you cut through paper like can you am i actually do i really mean that not really you can't really feel it you can't really feel it but i do uh, maybe there's a psychological difference. I felt like this slipped through the paper in a... Has this ever been done? Ever? Uh-oh. It will continue to go undone, I guess. All right, I'm going to perfect that technique and come back at you with it. But uh, <laughs> that was stupid. Um, I feel like uh, even the micro-texturing of that maybe... Not, all right, scratch that whole item of conversation. I do feel like maybe the finish here has a different feel when you cut it, but it's it's negligible because they're both so thin, so sharp, that which one glides through paper easier? Like, does it matter? It's both of them, it's like the paper's barely there. All right, so you see on this S90V blade, that beautiful giant sharpening notch. I mean, that is big. And that is ensuring a lifetime of use there. You can keep sharpening and sharpening. And it's so thin down here by the edge that if you were to sharpen up to the top of that notch, it would still be a uh, very sharp and keen edge. Uh, okay, so you can remove the covers. And then once you remove the covers, you can get to the body screws and the spring screw and all that. Uh, I have not taken any of these out, oh, and you can adjust the pivot or take it apart that way. <coughs> I am not much of a tinkerer and have not been tempted to take these apart. I like them just how they are. And it's not like I'm doing stuff and getting uh, with these that gets gunk or filth or muck up in there that I have to take them apart. Uh, let me show you the packaging before I show some comparisons. Uh, again, the, the really cool artwork. Uh, I can hear the Hawaiian music. Oh, look at that. I didn't even notice that. I love the cross hatching on the um, mountains there. When I draw trees and draw foliage, I do that to fill it in. So that looks cool. That's a trick I got from this artist. What's his name? Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, so this is really, really uh, cool. Again, chilling out, laying back, drinking some beers. Uh, he's got a pillow. Very nice. I like the purple trees against the orange sky. This is beautiful. A little dude down here. Uh, so you open it up. You get the pog. For those of you who are pog savvy, I am not. I turned 52 today, people. I don't know about pogs. And then in here is a um, sticker. He, gave, he shipped it with two stickers. So the other one, uh, which is very cool, and the other one now resides on one of my daughter's uh, my younger daughter's hydro flasks uh, laid back. Very cool sticker. Love the artwork. I love the whole vibe of these. Um, 
someday, when I have a different man cave, I will have a shelf. And like the dudes used to have beer cans on the shelf, I will have my Jack Wolf knife accoutrement on the shelf for all to see. Very cool. Oh, Zach Smith. That was the artist I was thinking of. If you guys don't know who Zach Smith is, just Google him. Even if you're not into art, check out J Zach Smith. Uh, his pictures of girls are awesome. And that's a book. And then he's got this, he does a thing of Gravity's Rainbow where he illustrates each page. His pen and ink, it's awesome. Check it out. Especially if you like tattoos, I think. He's got a lot of girls with tattoos in his pictures. All right, anyway, that's enough about that. Uh, let me show you some comparison knives. Yeah, this definitely has a stouter action than the first version. Um, and that's neither here nor there because this is a sumptuous action as well. Here it is with a couple of other notable straight edge blades from Jack Wolf. This is the Venom Jack, a worn cliff, a nice broad worn cliff with a slightly downward raking edge. Such a beauty, such a beauty. And these go together, uh, they, they all fit, all Jack Wolf knives except for the Gunslinger are meant to fit these sumptuous leather pouches. These are so luxurious. And if you like even more luxury, you can buy um, some really cool ones uh, with more um, supple leather and white stitching uh, on their website, which actually I have to get, I have to get one just for the feature knife of the day. And I'll put it in that. Um, I like keeping these individual so that each one takes on the form of the knife that belongs in the, the pouch. But I do want to get one that is a little fancier that I can put any one of them in. Anyway, there you go. Uh, nice broad blade on the, uh, look at that, the difference on the Venom Jack. Cool. And then this one, look at that, carbon fiber. Now, I am not a huge carbon fiber guy, but I am, uh, I do love this kind of carbon fiber. This camo carbon or, or fat carbon, the swirly stuff, the marble stuff. I go for it. Not all the time, but... It's nice to have like this beautiful, subtle piece of carbon fiber on this uh, on this awesome knife. I love it. Um, here it is with the last slip joint before this one, because between this and this was the uh, guns <laughs> the gunslinger. Uh, this a nice uh, uh, sheep's foot, beautiful sheep's foot. I love that the way they that shape. I mean, that's a classic. That's ah, so beautifully ground too. You know, I, I, I don't, I'm not into speculating who makes these. Uh, I don't know. I don't know manufacturers well enough um, to, to be able to, but I do have to say uh, that grinder satin is evocative of a certain brand that I love. And I'm, you know, and, and the quality that we see here would not be surprising uh, from that company. Again, I got uh, a little carbon fiber on this one. Oh, what a beauty. I love the doctor's knife pattern, and I don't have one. Um, I got one for my dad, who used to be a doctor uh, in his working life. Here we go. This is a Midnight Jack, um, another beautiful straight edge. Uh, this one, a sheep's foot next to that beautiful new Warren Cliff. Lots of micarta um, in my Jack Wolf knives collection, but no more because there is no more micarta. Uh, but that's cool. I'm a, I'm a man with, a f with flexible tastes. Uh, I love these exotic carbon fibers. I love this. Uh, I love the, that there's titanium and that purple kyanite, but man, this is hitting it out of the park, this beautiful rosewood. Um, rosewood is frequently found on the fretboard of guitars. Um, so it's a robust material and beautiful with a nice rich history and a beautiful look. Uh, oh, let me just show it off with a, two other notables. Um, also worn cliffs, but from Great Eastern Cutlery. Here it is with the number 47 Viper. Uh, I, I tend to think that, or at least when I started into collecting slip joints, this was the most coveted of the Great Eastern Cutleries. Now, many other new models have come out since then. So in my mind, it's sort of like the guy who's frozen in the 90s, like I am with fashion. You know, at a certain point, you're like, all right, I'm not keeping up. Um, <laughs> well, to me, this is still the grail um, Great Eastern Cutlery Knife, the number 47 Viper. 
and um, this one in that beautiful plum jigged bone. Man, that's gorgeous. Uh, but this is this is the knife I think of when I think of the laid back jack. It's a little bigger, um, but still you get that classic Warncliffe shape and oh man, and that classic Warncliffe or uh, um, sway back feel. Just a little li less swaying of the back, which is what I prefer. And then lastly, the cute and adorable little, little rattler, little rattler. An awesome little fifth pocket knife from Great Eastern Cutlery. Funny story behind this knife. Uh, it never showed up. I ordered it and had it sent uh, to, from Blade HQ, I think. I had it sent to my office. It never showed up. There was sort of a derelict guy who worked in our, um, I shouldn't say that, a guy who was in recovery, uh, but very obviously in recovery, who who worked in our office, who in the mail office, that I found out liked knives, and then I assumed he stole this out of the mail. I even said so on one of the shows uh, that I suspected that. And then I bought a new one for me, and then and then the other one showed up. It just showed up out of the blue. It had nothing to do with that guy. I was being judgy and horrible um and uh so i got two of them and i sent the other one to my dad i felt like such a jerk uh but anyway so don't judge a book by its cover though sometimes you have a good idea of what the story is from the cover all right the little rattler all right anyway <laughs> that this is a video about this knife this is now available as of today uh august 18th 2023 these go on sale at all of your dealers and there are a lot of dealers so many opportunities to get behind the wheel of this beautiful jack wolf knife jack wolf knives uh version two of the laid back jack i highly suggest the rosewood but uh, get whichever flavor you enjoy all right thanks for watching